Right. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, thank you everyone for, for making time to join us today. Uh, Alhamdulillah, there's uh, quite good response to this session. And uh, we hope that over time more and more people can join us uh, so that we can share more with the world and uh, so that we can also address more uh, issues, concerns, um, whatever our experiences and our insights uh, to more people. This is the fourth, uh, fourth webinar that we've had over the past few months. Uh, and this webinar is a little bit different because the initial, uh, the, the earlier webinars had guest speakers uh, and I was the uh, host or the MC. So I was asking questions, not talking so much, but today I'll be doing all the talking. So I, I hope uh, whatever I share will be useful and valuable for you. All right, so let's get uh, right to it. How to profit like a property developer? Right. Okay. Now, first, first slide is about property. So why property? A lot of people, when you speak to investors, whether it's high net worth individuals, uh, whether it's large corporations, or whether it's newbie first time investors, property is always something uh, that people are interested in. So I'll just highlight a few main uh, factors or main points. Right? First of all is returns. Property gives property investment can potentially give very good returns. Right? And the second point we have here is on the trend. And the third point, I'll, I'll talk about all three, is stability. So relative or compared to other investment options, property has always been giving good returns. Uh, of course, there are ups and downs in the property cycle and so on. But in the long term, property always gives good returns. And uh, not only that, because the trend is clear, that the property cycle or the property business cycle or the market uh, cycle for property. Uh, we can see clear trends. Yeah. And when you latch onto these trends, then you can also uh, time your investment properly, right? And of course, stability. You're investing in solid land. When you invest in equities or companies or, or other uh, financial instruments, or uh, invest in other kinds of projects, there's always going to be a risk that something can go wrong and that can affect and affect your capital, yeah? For real estate or for property, at the end of the day, we have stability because you're investing in something that's solid, tangible, physical, which is the ground that we live on, the ground that we stand on, and buildings that are built on this ground. So these are three major or main factors that I want to highlight right at the very beginning before jumping deeper into the next slide where it gets a little bit more interesting. This is the real estate life cycle. Yeah, this is what happens to land over time. Yeah, you can see five different stages here and people invest in different stages of this cycle. Right, let me run through it quickly. So first you have undeveloped land. Undeveloped land is just land. It's just a green, uh, green field yeah? where this land does tend to appreciate over time but very slowly because the land, uh, land is scarce, land is limited. So over time land does increase in price. Uh, let's look at the second phase or the second uh, cycle, second step of this cycle, which results in higher value uh, increase or appreciation. Here is where the land is zoned or when the land is demarcated by the government or identified for a specific purpose. And when that happens, the value starts to go up because it's no longer just land, random land with, with no uh, a clear purpose. Now it's land that has a purpose, right? So what happens next? Once the government or, or once the land is already zoned or identified, there's some concept planning, then developers start to come in, right? Then the business of real estate development starts, okay? Now phase one and phase two, there are people who invest in this. Yeah? Uh, the concept typically is called land banking or, or land development. Yeah, and uh, I, I would say it's a good investment uh, but typically, it depends a lot on when the land that you purchase is zoned, uh, which then coincides with when you can start making money, right? Now, the third and fourth part, horizontal development, where the land itself is developed. And the land is developed with infrastructure, electricity, uh, uh, transport networks, and so on. That's horizontal development. And once that land is ready, you start building structures on top of the land. Now, this is where I, we believe uh, the opportunity lies. And this is why real estate or property developers are usually in most countries, the biggest, most profitable companies, right? You go to any company, I'm from Singapore, the biggest companies in Singapore 
uh, real estate developers, property developers, and banks, because banks give money and they're huge typically. But as a business, property development, property developers are typically the biggest, wealthiest companies. Why? Because they buy land, which already has a very clear, tangible value, and then they add value on that land, right? That's what's happening in stage three and four. You add value on the land, you process the land, you add structures on the land, and that value, it, that causes the value of the land and the asset to increase. So you can see on the graph uh, how it starts to accelerate in terms of the land value. The potential value of this project starts to accelerate, right? So horizontal development followed by vertical development. Yeah, so I recap, we buy something that has clear value, which is land, right? Tangible physical value. You add structures on it, right? You add concepts uh, on it. You build up value horizontally and then vertically. And that value that is created by that business activity is then sold to the market or is rented out. And that's where money starts flowing in, right? So that is how real estate developers property developers make very good profit in a very stable environment in the short term as well as in the long term. Then we go on to number five, right? phase five. This is where a lot of uh, investors like to enter the real estate life cycle. Um, and it's not a bad thing. Of course, this can be a very good uh, uh, phase to enter also where you buy properties or you buy assets that are ready. Right? You buy it for capital appreciation or you buy it for rental income. Now, the challenge here is in, in step five, you can see the graph becomes zigzag. Yeah? So if you buy at the wrong time, if you buy at a high price, then it's going to be difficult for you to make good profit. If you buy it at, the, at, a, at a time where the property uh, prices are low, and then you have a chance of appreciation over time. Now, so what happens here is that there are a few barriers. Firstly, you need to understand the market very well. And sometimes it's very difficult to predict exactly when is the right time to, to buy, whether prices are going to go up soon. Right? Sometimes you buy when prices are low and you expect it to go up in the next one or two years, but it takes three to five years. So then you need to have holding power. Yeah? And if you're if you buying it for rental, then again, you have challenges and issues with finding the right tenants, the right pricing and so on. Right? So, when we look at this life cycle, one, two, three, four, and five, what we are focused on are the green, uh, is the green portion, three and four. Right? We come in or we help you to come in into property projects uh, together, and I'll explain that exactly how that is done later on. Together, we bring a pool of people, we bring the crowd, our community to invest together in land, in developments, or, or halfway through a development, build up value, sell that value, and profit from creating that value, right? So inshallah, this is something that I hope all of you will think about seriously. And because of the way, the format, and the approach of how we do things, you can start with a small amount of capital, or you can jump right in and invest a large amount so that you can get significant returns, inshallah, right? Let us move on. Okay. So that was about the real estate cycle, right? And I've explained to you why typically in very simple terms, uh, real estate property development, it's a very good investment opportunity. Yeah, later I'll touch on some more factors related to that, but I now wanna to touch on Indonesia, right? Now I lived in Indonesia for about six years in the past, um, from, from the year 2008, I think, yeah, for about six years after that. And I saw incredible growth while I was there. Indonesia is huge. It is the biggest Muslim country in the world with close to 300 million people. And the important thing is it has been growing very, very steadily every single year. For the past 15 years since the Asian uh, financial crisis, Indonesia has always been growing uh, at a rate of more than 4%. So it's very, very stable. Yeah, so you can look at the two graphs here. Uh, the first graph uh, talks about the GDP or the income of the country. It has been increasing steadily uh, every single year, right, on a per capita basis. And you can see the house price index. Okay, uh, so let's continue. You can see, I'll, I'll recap the last part in case you did not hear, did not hear me earlier, right? Uh, what's happening, what happens is that 
uh, what's happening here is that the GDP is increasing steadily in Indonesia. The income of the country is increasing steadily year by year, every single year. Now, recently, Indonesia had some you know, bad press or, or, or uh, news about disasters there. But even with natural disasters, the country continues to grow very strongly. And I would say Indonesia is the bright spot or the, the bright spark in the Muslim world. It's a country that's stable, fast growth, with a lot of potential. Yeah. Okay. Now, here we have some statistics in the next slide on government spending, Indonesian government spending on infrastructure, which includes uh, property. Yeah. Indonesia's middle class, because the middle class is growing so fast, the middle and lower middle class is growing so fast, the demand for houses is huge. And so the government has had to allocate more and more money in Indonesia to this need. Yeah? And that's the trend that we are uh, working on. This is the trend that we, are identi that we have identified. And this is why we are investing, you are investing with us, through us to Indonesia. Yeah. Okay. Now here in this slide, we have a figure there. 11.8 million people do not have homes. And the, the, the structure or the system that we latch into where we provide bridging finance, where you provide bridging finance with us, is into the social housing scheme that is supported by the national government, by the federal government. So that also makes it much less uh, riskier. But I'll get more into that later on. Right. Now here is, uh, you can see, uh, we, we, we are focusing more on the macro aspect of Indonesia. You can see infrastructure, which is the bright green one in the middle of this graph. And from 2014, there has been a steep increase every year on infra infrastructure spending. And this is to address the short shortage of houses. The Indonesian government has, has targeted to make or uh, to develop a million houses every year, right? To address this shortage because every year the need increases. Yeah. And over the past few years, the government, the, the country, the, the sector, uh, the real, the property industry has managed to produce close to a hundred uh, sorry, close to a million houses. Last year, if I'm not wrong, the statistics were more than about 800,000 houses were developed. Yeah, so we hope to contribute towards that. We'll share more in the next few slides. Right. Now back to real estate uh, a little bit. What are the barriers? If real estate is such a, a wonderful business, right? why aren't you investing in real estate development? Right? Why, why isn't everyone investing in property development? Well, clearly there are barriers. Now, as a developer, if you want to go into that business, as a developer, there's issues of regulations, especially if you're not from Indonesia, you're living in the other side of the world, you know, it's going to be difficult or challenging for you to understand and fulfill all the requirements of the regulators on the ground in Indonesia. Now, secondly, funding. You need a lot of money to be a real estate developer. You need to buy land, you need to fund contractors, you need to do all sorts of things. And this typically requires a large sum of money, right? I will, of course, go into how we overcome these barriers shortly, but let's understand the barriers first. Now, the third barrier for developers is expertise. You need to really understand how to do the uh, property development business. There's all the technical aspects of it. There's the cultural aspect of the people or the community you're serving. There's the market aspect. There's so many different aspects that you have to consider, and this takes a lot of expertise. Now, as an investor, you also have challenges, yeah? And some of these challenges are similar. Of course, firstly, there's the availability. As an investor, if you want to invest in a real estate development business, right, it can be challenging also, right? A lot of developers may not be so open uh, to receiving external investment, uh, especially if it's not a significantly large amount, yeah? And uh, that goes on to the next point, right? When you go to a, a property developer, he's going to expect you to have at least a few million or maybe at the very least a few hundred thousand dollars uh, before he's uh, even willing to share anything with you. Yeah. And uh, last but not least, the same uh, challenge or barrier that a developer face, the investor will also face. How do you overcome or address regulations? How do you make sure whatever you're doing is above board and Thus, also can protect your rights. Now, uh, let's look at some examples. And this is an illustration. Lokman from Singapore, uh, one of our investors. Now, he has a challenge because he doesn't have enough money. Yeah, he is a, a, a good income earner. He earns about $10,000 a month. 
he has a few thousand dollars extra every month, but that is never going to be enough to do real estate development. Right? So how do we solve his problem? How does Ethis Crowd allow someone like Lokman to come on board and profit from this business? Right? There we have Hisham from Germany. Now, Hisham's problem is different. His problem is regulations. He has some cash. He has his own money. Maybe he, family and friends, they've come together and they have a pot. They have a pool of money that they want to channel to projects. They want to invest it in real estate or property development. But he's not sure about regulations, especially in another country. And so because of this lack of information or understanding, it becomes difficult for him to take that step. And then we have Sister Suad from uh, Dubai, from UAE, and her problem is expertise. She has the money and she has, uh, let's say, contracted friends who can do the work for her, right? Uh, and they understand the regulations, but her expertise is lacking. Can she uh, depend on, uh, on these people to utilize her investment property, uh, properly? Yeah. So these are three very common problems. And these are probably the problems that you also face uh, when you look at property development. Right. So this is the solution. The solution is, is actually very simple and it's very profound. Right? The most profound things are usually the simple things. Crowdfunding is where we have a group of people coming together to fund something specific. Right? So this in itself is a concept that humanity, that, that communities have been utilizing for many, many years. Right? Pooling funds for a specific purpose. The difference now is that this is done online. Yeah. So crowdfunding as a model utilizes digital platforms to, to form a crowd online for people like you to come join us and pull your funds together so that you can invest or donate in a specific project or a specific opportunity. Right? Crowdfunding is very, very flexible in the sense that uh, platforms can allow you or facilitate your contribution or your investment to many different types of things. Right, you can invest in real estate or property development on Ethis Crowd, which is what we're talking about today. You can invest in other investment opportunities. You can make donations. You can fund startups. All sorts of things can be done with crowdfunding. Right? Crowdfunding is a subset of what is called fintech, the financial technology. Although the technology is not you know, very, very advanced, high-end technology in that sense, but the business model that has come out because of digital platforms is something that is disrupting the world. Just like how e-commerce is changing retail shopping or even B2B uh, 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 shopping or commerce, crowdfunding is changing project financing. So now today when you have funds and you want to, do, to utilize it, in this case, when you want to invest in a property development project, you just need to go to our platform, ethiscrowd.com look at the campaigns that are available, choose the ones that you like, confirm the amount that you want to, do, to, to invest, and then from there, the process starts kicking in. And before you know it, you're already profiting like a property developer. Right? Now, this is a visual representation of how it works. Right? So one investor comes forward, he puts in a small amount of money, and this amount of money contributes to a part of the real estate development project. More investors come forward, more investors pool their funds, more investors invest inside the same project. And over time, the, the progress meter will move. You will see on our website, on our website, there's a project uh, progress meter or progress bar. They will move as more and more people invest in this, it reaches 100%. As soon as it reaches 100%, the money then gets disbursed uh, or the money then get, goes to the project and the project starts being developed and over time completed and eventually giving you your profits, right? So let me show you a quick uh, video, I believe. This is a short video for you to understand better how, how it works on Ethics Crowd.
Yeah, so it's so simple, 30 second video, just explain to you how you can do it. And we have our team to facilitate you at every step of the way so that your experience is smooth, easy, and fulfilling. Yeah, inshallah. Now, uh, we'll share, I'll share with you now very quickly some of our statistics so you understand what we have done. Uh, and uh, of course, I'll share a little bit also on what we want to do moving forward. Yeah. So our community has grown quite rapidly over the last few years. We, we were initially uh, an Islamic investment club in Singapore. That's how we started. It was called Club Ethis. Uh, Ethis, if you don't know, is ethical and Islamic. Now, over time, uh, about three years ago, we went online. Yeah? And then we became a crowdfunding platform so that more people can invest together with us. And today we have a growing community, a global community of about 25,000 uh, investors from all around the world. We have people from 65 different countries and growing every day, every month. Um, we have collectively together, our community has invested into projects worth more than 50 million Singapore dollars. And about 10% of that came from the crowd. That yeah, came from you. Now, what does this mean? This means that when a, a project is typically very large, a property project is large, our crowd, you come in to contribute about 10% usually of that project. The real estate developer, the property developer has funds, his own funds, or sometimes from Islamic banks, or sometimes over time they do sales and they get revenue. So money comes from other sources also. You're not investing alone. You're not the only ones funding this project. There are other sources of funds, right? So our funds, what our funds does is that this, the funds that you put in your investment goes mainly into more construction activities to build up vertically and create more value or to speed up the progress of the project. It is very important to note that the project typically has its own funds and you are adding on funds or you are providing some bridging funds for the project to continue faster or better, right? Now, uh, over the past two years or over the past three years, the crowd, the Ethics crowd has invested in many, many projects and more than 20 projects. And um, all these projects are continuously running. Some are completed. Most are still ongoing. Yeah? Typically, our investment term is for about one year for the uh, crowd investors for you. Now, uh, in total, we will be helping to build 6,000 houses compared to the shortage of about 11, 12 million. That's, that's not that much. But think about it. Just a platform your contribution to our platform has helped 6,000 houses be built and that has helped 25,000 people get a home. Yeah? So to understand better the social impact, I'll show you a short video, a few minutes video, because not only is making money important, but making money for the right reason is also very important. And I'm confident that once you start investing, you will feel the, the satisfaction of making your money do something good while making money for yourself. Enjoy the short clip. Nah, mungkin dalam kehidupan enakan di rumah sendiri daripada ngontrak gitu oh, ya. Jadi <laughs> ya. Iya, ngontrak kan makanya saya ada di sini ngambil agak merasa ringan juga, agak terjangkau gitu ya. Namanya mas kerja gitu suami nggak begitu jauh, udah gitu saya udah lama nggak punya rumah. <laughs> jadi sedih saya. <laughs> Udah lama saya nggak punya rumah, pernah ngambil rumah juga dibohongin. Saya sampai habis-habisan jual gelang, jual kalung. Uang muka 10 juta saya raib, dibohongin sama developer. Uh, kan panas, terus ya, ya keadaan. Ya pokoknya kalau di sana ya kurang inilah gitu ya, udah rasanya kurang nyaman. Gitu. Hmm. Saya kan udah lama di sana juga berapa, 30. Berapa tahun ya, ya, ya? selama nikah? Hah? 30 tahun anak saya empat cowok semua jadi satu oh. ya tadinya kan cuman buat invest kan? hmm. cuman buat istilah kata simpanan se selama kita masih kuat mampu gitu buat ya ntar kan buat anak cucu lah istilah kata ya, ya. Insya Allah kedepannya mudah-mudahan kita bisa bekerja sama kembali dengan para investor dan juga para dengan etis crowd terima kasih assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh kita mau Say thank you untuk Ethis Venture dan kepada para investor terutama karena sudah bisa membantu kita di sini mendevelop proyek kita yang di Bogor ini dan kedepannya supaya kerjasama kita semakin baik dan bisa semakin besar. 
semoga ya Etis dan Kasavera bisa berkembang bersama meraih target dan harapan masing-masing sesuai Amin. dengan goalsnya so. kedepannya kita sama-sama lah untuk menjalin silaturahmi juga menjadi lebih besar dan bermanfaat untuk banyak orang Amin. 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 Thank you. Kita mau terima kasih kepada pihak Etis dan para investor yang telah percaya kepada PT Anugerah Karya Bangun untuk investasi ke dalam proyek e, Mutiara Muktiwari sebanyak 30 unit. Baik, itu aja dari saya. Terima kasih. Oke, okay, alhamdulillah. So, we have reached the end of this short presentation uh, where I tried my best to to highlight the major uh, the main factors, the main considerations and the main information that you need to know so that you can make an informed decision when you decide to invest in the projects that we have on our platform right now uh, we've already uh, we have a few questions coming in if you have any questions if you want to know more about what we do and how we do and how you can get involved if you want to know more about how you can invest then feel free to type in your question um, i'll proceed with a few questions that were asked uh, over the past few weeks uh, by the, by some of you uh, when you registered for this webinar All right, so here's the first question. How can we eradicate poverty via crowdfunding platforms? And this comes from Nigeria. Wow, that's very far away. Now, um, eradication of poverty is a huge thing. It's a, I mean, it's, it's, it's a huge endeavor. Uh, maybe we cannot eradicate poverty entirely through crowdfunding, but we can definitely make an impact. We can definitely have a change. Now, I will speak about specifically our context and then a bit of more uh, general context, uh, crowdfunding in general. Yeah? Now, in our context, uh, what Ethics Crowd does is that it channels your investment directly to real estate uh, property development projects. Now, most of the projects or our main focus is affordable and subsidized housing. Yeah? One house is typically sold at about Um, in US dollars, about 10 to 12,000 US dollars, right? Which is a very low amount uh, to own a house, right? And as you can see in the videos earlier, uh, most of the houses that we have been uh, supporting are small landed houses. Now, for a poor family in Indonesia, before these houses that we built together are made available, they typically stay in rented rooms. They rent rooms from other low-income families because there are no houses for them. And the rental amount, after we did a lot of checks and investigation, the, the rental amount is typically about 100 US dollars, right? Or sometimes even more for one room. And that room has everybody in it, five people, six people sometimes, sometimes two families sharing that space, men, women, children, everybody. So it's not hygienic typically, it's not, sanit it's not clean, it's not safe. It's not good uh, in terms of a family environment and there's a lot of social problems created. From the houses that we built, uh, these uh, low-income families get, typically they get financing from Islamic banks supported by a government subsidy. All they need to do is to pay 1% down payment and they can pay the remainder over installments, long-term installments, right? Through Islamic financing. Now, they pay every month a smaller amount usually than what they used to pay to rent a room. So you can see with the same amount of contribution or the same amount of money coming out of their small salaries, they can actually now own an asset. They can own a house. Typically, there are two bedrooms. You can separate men and women and you have an asset, right? So it has been proven many, many reports that low-income families, poor people with a, sh a shelter over their head, Uh, gives them two things right one is stability psychological stability right? you have a room you know that you, you have a shelter over your head you have a house you know that you have a base you know that this is where the family is safe that's the first thing and this to the non-low-income people to, to the ordinary or, or wealthy people this may not seem so significant but to low-income people to poor people this is a very very big factor right the knowledge that you have a roof over your head you know that you are not dependent on the landlord, it is your house. Yeah? So that's the first factor. And that helps these families to break out of the poverty cycle. Now, the second factor is about having an asset, an affordable asset, an asset that can be passed down. 
we saw in one of the videos, this lady was saying that she bought it as an investment. What she meant was an investment for the future, an investment for her children, for her grandchildren, so that they have every month as they are paying, instead of just paying rental that goes to the landlord, they're actually paying for their own asset. And this asset appreciates in value over time. Yeah. So through funding, developing uh, low cost housing, this is one method to help poor families, low income families break out of poverty. And when they break out of that cycle, and it's a, it's a chronic cycle usually, when they break out of that cycle, you are not only solving poverty for them at that point in time, but also for their future generations, inshallah. Yeah? Now, so that is what we do as, at this crowd. Crowdfunding in general, how we can help to alleviate or, or eradicate poverty, basically is by matching funds to the right projects. Right? Crowdfunding, the key value to me for crowdfund crowdfunding is transparency. We give the information. Platforms provide the right uh, accurate information as much as possible to the crowd so that you can make an informed decision. Right? Um, in the Muslim world, there's a lot of charitable funds. Yeah? In, the U in the UK, there was a study that was done, UK crowdfunding platforms. Muslims give 10 times more than one of the major platforms. They had a, a, a survey. Muslims give on average 10 times more than non-Muslims. Right? I'm not saying Muslims are better. I'm just saying that it is part of our DNA to give. Now, if you talk about zakat, which is a compulsory sort of a tax on wealth, there's a lot of money that does not solve poverty. Why? Because it goes to the wrong places. It does not go to the most effective use or money is lost in the process. Right? When you give money to the poor, when you donate to someone, when you give charity, you may not always know whether it's reaching the right people. But on a crowdfunding platform, you are given the information, you're given typically direct contact with the beneficiary. So that is how crowdfunding can give a significant impact uh, or, or help to eradicate uh, poverty. Excellent question. Thank you very much, uh, our friend from Nigeria. Let's move on to a second question. Oh, we have a lot of questions coming in. So I have to speed up. How much time do we have? Half an hour more? Oh, there's a lot of time. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Why should we start investing in property development and how do we start? All right, so great question. And this is what I attempted to answer uh, in the past 20 minutes. Why should we start investing in property de uh, development? In general, why should you start investing? It's an important question, right? The earlier you start investing, the better, because then you can start to firstly gain the knowledge on how best to invest. And secondly, um, start to snowball your money, start to make your money work for you. Right? So why should you start investing in property development specifically is because of what I explained earlier. Let me summarize in a nutshell because I see there's a lot more people now compared to right at the very beginning who have joined us. Right? Property development is in the uh, phase of re the, re the, property, the real estate cycle where you build value, you build structures on top of land. Right? In doing so, you create new value and then that new value is sold to the market at a profit. Yeah? If you go to any, almost any country and look at the top 10, top 20 uh, wealthiest, biggest companies, you will see property developers make up a large portion of that because it is a, a business which is a no-brainer. It is a business that makes money and is stable at the same time. Of course, there are risks like every other business, but in this case, you know you're investing you are contributing, you're creating value on solid land. Yeah? Now, the barriers were, of course, how do you start? The barriers are you need a lot of money, you need expertise, uh, you need to understand regulations, and so on. Our platform, ethicscrowd.com, helps you to overcome all these things. Right? You can invest a large amount or you can invest a small amount. It's up to you. Some people want to put their money to use straight away. So whatever they have, they decide this is the allocation we want to put to F is crowd and they invest it right in. Then we have investors who invest $50,000, $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 and above. Then we've had investors who, who want to invest millions of dollars also. At the same time, we also serve those who do not have such a big budget or allocation. You can start with 500 Singapore dollars, which is about 350 US dollars. 
Yeah, so you can start small or you can start large. It's up to you. It's up to your strategy. Yeah. Our advice is always to diversify, right? Invest in many different projects as much as you can, uh, and also uh, to invest within your means. And yeah? not to invest, you know, money that you are dependent on. To invest money that you have allocated for investment into our projects. Now, uh, let me backtrack a little bit because why should we start investing in property development? Also implies what are the risks. Yeah, and there are always risks. So in property development, typically the risk is delays yeah? because there are many variables and factors and uh, these factors may result in delays. And in the past, some of our projects did encounter delays. So we are very open and transparent about the performance of our projects, the performance of our campaigns that we have featured on our platform. For the real estate property development project in Indonesia over the past three years, Alhamdulillah, we have not had any failures, but we have had some delays. So please, when you invest, consider that you need to have some sort of holding power. Now, today, after our experience, we have uh, learned a lot from the past few years and the projects that we have been funding the past one year, all of them essentially are on track. <coughs> Excuse me. And in fact, a number of them have completed earlier than projected, right? And this is because over time we add in more buffers. Yeah, we add in more fallbacks. We structure the deal with the developer to make sure that we have de-risked the project as much as possible before opening up to FS Crowd investors, right? Um, this is something very, very important for you to take note of and something that I want to highlight that your investment goes into the project. The project has an asset. The project can protect your capital in that way, right? But you still need to factor in some possibility of delays, all right? And how do you start? Go to our website, fiscrowd.com. 30 second video just now, I explained to you how it's done. Uh, you can do it on your own. We have our team here that is always happy to support you. Uh, we communicate by phone, by WhatsApp, by email, by social media, whichever way suits you, that's easy for you, inshallah, you'll be more than happy to facilitate, right? Okay, uh, let me add another point to this before I move on to other questions. Uh, we also have a user dashboard, right? as you saw in the video earlier, you get reports every month. Right, we have a team on the ground in Jakarta, in Indonesia, that will physically visit projects, capture information, verify updates, and then hand it over to our team, and then we will put it on your dashboard for you. Right, so if everything's moving nicely, you get that information. If there's some issue, we get that information. When the issue is solved, you get that information. What you want, I believe what investors want today, is information. Right, I'm sure all of you understand the pros and cons of investment, uh, but what you need and what we want to provide you as a platform is accurate and timely information. All right. Now, next question. I actually sort of addressed this already. How to make smaller investments with promising returns? Uh, I would take this question is from Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan is a country that's having a lot of exciting changes today. Now, um, with small money, you don't really have that many very high yield opportunities. Right. Of course, you can invest yourself informally in small businesses, yeah, but you need to be able to be actively involved in managing that. You can invest in financial products, equities, and so on. Yeah, but typically, the bigger deals, uh, the better deals are for high net worth individuals. Now, crowdfunding is definitely one way for you. Right? And what we do is real estate uh, property development crowdfunding. There are also other crowdfunding platforms out there. You can do your own searches. Uh, that can also allow small investments uh, to make good potential returns. Yeah? So I would say, of course, I'm biased, but definitely crowdfunding, or sometimes it's called peer-to-peer -peer financing, equity crowdfunding, investment crowdfunding. These are avenues for you if you have small capital and you're looking for bigger returns. All right, next question, also from Pakistan. How do social housing programs profit since it's for social good? Now, this question assumes that you cannot do good and make profit, which is, which is not true. Uh, our experience is, and this is why a lot of people are attracted to what we do, is you make money and you do good. Yeah? 
And I believe that, that uh, for ethical investors, impact investors, this is a trend that is growing. And it's a very positive trend. More and more people want to invest in something that creates good. Yeah? In our case, the houses are low cost. The houses are cheap. Right? And the prices are set by the Indonesian government. We cannot play around with the subsidized housing price. And there is still a margin, there is still a profit that the proper property developers make. And we share in that profit through our different methods of financing projects. Yeah, so this is very important to take note of. Of course, when we speak to property developers, our friends, our partners in Indonesia, if they were to do high-end properties, they make more money. Yeah, typically, there's more profit there. Right? But the key difference, and which is also the benefit for social housing, why we love social housing, is not only the impact, but also because the need is so high. There's so many people who are queuing up to buy these houses. If you go to the high-end market, you have some risk of being able to find customers or being able to find buyers, right? Or to find buyers who can get financing and that kind of thing. But for our projects, for the social housing projects, there's a huge shortage. Uh, there's government support for, for financing uh, mortgages, Islamic mortgages, right? And at the same time, another point that's very, very important is as with all businesses, it is affected by the economy, right? But for this sector, for the low income, whatever happens to the economy, there's always going to be a demand for social housing, yeah? So we like the, the security, the stability, and the fact that there's always a lot of people who need and want these houses. So we don't have to worry too much about the exit. We don't have to worry too much about what happens when we want to sell, because for many of our projects, the sales are already done even before uh, the projects are completed, right? As you are crowdfunding with us, the projects, the units are already sold. So the risk is much lower, right? So I recap, for social housing in Indonesia, there is still a good profit that we can share. It is less than you know, high-end properties, but the profit is still something that is fairly attractive to most of us. And it's difficult to get the kind of profit you know, out there in the market today because you are sharing in property development profits. Yeah? And um, because it's social housing, the demand is there, the market is there, and the market is always there. It is recession-proof, inshallah. All right, next question. What happens in the event of default by the recipient of our money? Will at least legally help investors to recover our funds or are we on our own? This is from the UAE. So this is a great question. Um, as an investor, you should always think of worst case scenario, right? As much as we are all positive people and we want to be positive, but we also need uh, uh, to also think of what happens if something does go wrong, because in the real world, things can and do go wrong. So here the question is about default. Right. In our real estate projects, because it's property, there will be a form of collateral. Right? In most of our projects, there will, be, there will be a form of collateral or asset that is held for or is held to protect the capital that's invested. It, typically, it is land or it is units, yeah, housing units. If something goes wrong, now Uzbillah, if something bad happens to the developer or something bad happens to you know, something related to the project, uh, let's say a natural disaster or anything like that, then the asset can be utilized or can be disposed of and whatever proceeds from the collateral can be shared with the investors. Now, there is still a risk of loss, but typically you will get back most of your capital, right? The important thing is the risk of total loss is very, very unlikely. Now, I need to highlight here that for crowdfunding, for all crowdfunding platforms, you are investing in real world projects. You are investing in uh, something that is in the real world. So even if you go to the conventional platforms that give fixed interest, right? You put in $10,000 uh, $10, and we give you 5% interest, not us, but conventional platform. Even that interest, although it's fixed, it depends on whether the, the campaign or the project owner can fulfill his um, his obligation or his commitment to you, right? So to me, the risk is the same. Whether it is the Islamic approach of profit sharing, construction financing, istisna, or whether it's interest-based, the risk is on the project itself or on the company that you are funding, all right? 
So that's the first question, right? What happens in the event of a default? The, whatever collateral that is there will be disposed of. Uh, Ethis has a sister company which is a real estate developer in Indonesia to protect your rights and to help to recover projects that may face problems. Uh, the second part is, will Ethis help investors to recover your fund? Definitely what we do is we facilitate, right? As a platform, our job is to match, right? So we match you to the project and we match the uh, legal assistants or lawyers to you when and if there is a problem so that it can be resolved, right? There may be some costs and we will be transparent with you in the event that something does go wrong and we need some money or the project needs money to be recovered. Yep. Okay, next question. How to get profit the Islamic way? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, we have a lot of videos on our, our website. You can, you can check out our videos page uh, that explains about getting profits Islamically. But essentially, we cannot make profits or we cannot make money from interest uh, or money on money. What we can is when there's profits realized, the profits are shared, right? We have a Musharaka and Mudaraba, or we can buy and sell, right? So typically for construction finance, we are financing uh, a house. We are buying the house. We are paying for the house in advance. And later when the house is constructed and done, it's sold at a profit. And that profit is shared, right? So in a nutshell, uh, that, that summarizes it. But well, we're running out of time. <laughs> 11 questions. Oh, okay, many, many questions coming up. Uh, can someone invest from outside Indonesia? Yes, of course. So from wherever you are from, we accept and we facilitate investments, except from the US for certain tax reasons. Yeah, but what we do is we bring the world to invest in Indonesia. And increasingly, of course, Indonesians also invest in Indonesia. So this is exactly what we do. And we uh, encourage you uh, to join us. All right, isn't this the same? Yeah. All right, that's it. Uh, let me look at some of the online questions. How much, I'll just run through those that are maybe not so relevant, I, I, I will skip. Yeah, sorry? I'll close the slides. Stop video. Oh, sorry. Okay. Can you hear me? All right. How, how much do I need to start investing? Well, the answer is uh, 500 Singapore dollars, about 350 uh, US dollars. Yeah. Uh, how do you ratif ratify that the investment is structured according to Sharia? Now, this is very, very important and it's a huge responsibility, moral, spiritual responsibility. We have our internal Sharia team. Our lawyers are also trained in Sharia. And when needed, we also have external Sharia advisors. Yeah? So we make sure that everything is Sharia compliant end to end, inshallah. Okay. Uh, next question, what are the risks faced in investing? Is there a possibility of capital losses? Uh, there is always a possibility of capital loss in any real world investment. And that is where real estate and property gives you an advantage because we have assets, we have land, we have units, we have buildings that are collaterals uh, to your investment. So if anything goes wrong, those assets can be liquidated. It may take time, it may take some money, but at least you can recoup part of your capital or all of your capital. Yeah. Okay, what are the key criteria that's used in deciding which projects? to be featured on the platform? That's a great question. Now, we, we try our best to specialize in something narrow, and then over time, we expand to more things, right? Over the past three years, we have uh, uh, matched investors to various types of projects. Most of them have been in affordable housing, and that is our key specialty, because we understand the ecosystem, we understand the stakeholders, we understand the market, and Alhamdulillah, we have very strong partners who have proven themselves time and again, to be reliable, credible, and uh, to be timely in their uh, performance, right? So those are some of the criteria we use. Um, and I mean, we, we focus on the specific sectors, that's something important to share. And let's say in the context of affordable housing, we always ensure that the bank support, the Islamic bank support is already there, the government support is there, and the buyers are there. Of course, we also analyze further the location and so on uh, of that housing estate. However, I need to be very clear that as a platform, our job is to collect the relevant information and share it with you. We are not doing due diligence on your behalf. 
right? This means that you are make, taking your making your own decision to invest. We are here to to facilitate and match and help you make informed decisions. All right. We are out of time. Okay, five minutes. All right. Uh, what has been the average returns on investment for projects in 2018? Yeah, typically our projects will give a return of 10 to 15 percent. Yeah, uh, the recent projects give a return of about 12 to 15 percent. Right, so there's always the range there you can see, and you can see on our platform we have uh, different indicative or projected uh, returns for different projects. Right, you can you should go to our platform right now, ethicscrowd.com. And you will see that uh, in the past few weeks, most of our projects were fully funded very quickly, which is really great, Alhamdulillah. We have many projects in the pipeline that we'll be bringing and launching. So uh, do register because sometimes projects finish quite quickly. If you have this interest, you want to invest, make sure you register for the upcoming projects, um, upcoming campaigns, so that you'll be the first to know. Yeah? For those of you who want to invest or intend to invest larger amounts, uh, amounts of above 20,000 uh, Singapore dollars, about uh, 15,000 US dollars, then you can sign up to be a lead investor. Lead investors are given early access and sometimes private deals or private campaigns that is not for the general crowd uh, because they provide uh, more stability, because they provide larger amounts, which enables smaller investors to also come in together. That's how we structure or that's how we build the ecosystem with, with large and small investors uh, coming together, right? Uh, someone's asking a very interesting question. Can you pull out within a year? Can you exit a project uh, when the project is not completed? So you see on the platform, we have different time frames, different project duration. Those are all projected. Before the project finishes, before the project is completed, it is not like a bank where you can withdraw money, right? The money, your money is already inside the project. Now, in the near future, we plan to launch a secondary market or a resale market where you can actually uh, offer your investment if you want to leave early to other investors to take over. But at this point, it is not yet available. Okay. Um, let's see. There's so many questions. Let me have two more questions. How do you sustain such initiatives? Yeah, that's a nice way of saying, how do you make money? <laughs> now, um, we have to make money. I have to pay myself. I have to pay our, our team. We have a team of about 30 people right now and it's growing, yeah? Because we need to do so many things to make sure that, that uh, we fulfill uh, the expectations of our community so that we can grow bigger and bigger and do even more, yeah? So um, how do we sustain is we charge a fee, right? We charge two fees. The first fee we charge is to the project developer, right, or the contractor. We charge a fee to them for fundraising on their behalf, or fundraising, helping them to fundraise from the crowd and the community that we have. So every time you invest in the projects on our platform, the developer gets your money, and then the developer gives us our portion. Now, depending on the project, it ranges from, or depending on the, the campaign and the developer, uh, we negotiate with them fee of about 5%, sometimes 6%, sometimes even 7%, it really depends. And because we also have monthly checks on the ground, uh, we do do reporting and updating and all that, we also charge them a small fee uh, for our visits and for our check so that we can cover our cost. Yeah? Uh, platform businesses like ours typically don't make that much money uh, in the early stages, but inshallah, as we grow larger and larger, uh, we will have enough to sustain ourselves uh, right now, we, Alhamdulillah, we have a good batch of a group of uh, shareholders who also uh, invest in and support our project programs because they believe in what we're trying to do in the long run. Uh, the second fee that we charge is on your profit. Yeah? So when you make, when the project completes, you get your capital and you get your profit on top of your capital. Okay, let's say you put in $10,000 and you make 15%. It's a Right? So we charge 12.5% of that $1,500, right? which is about $180. Right? So that is our fee deducted from your profits. Right? So those are the two ways in which we make money uh, so that we can be sustainable and so that we can continue to service you uh, in the long run as well as grow to serve more people. Do we have time for one more question? 
All right, one more question. Can you bring this model to other countries? Well, the simple answer is in theory, yes, right? But there are a few, many considerations before we do. And uh, we are currently working on setting up and having uh, more activities in other countries. But at the same time, we are very, very confident and very aggressive on Indonesia as an investment destination. And uh, increasingly more and more investors are open and, and uh, attracted to Indonesia, right? But just so you know, we are also, we have had pilots and uh, campaigns in countries like South Africa, in Malaysia, uh, in the past, uh, some other campaigns, SME campaigns in Singapore, right? And uh, moving forward, we are also starting uh, to have projects or campaigns in Dubai. Uh, we also have partners in other countries. So over time, inshallah, we will expand and spread this concept to other countries. But for now, and even in the next few years, our core focus is Indonesia because we, we know and we believe that there's so many opportunities there and we want to bring the world to invest in Indonesia with us, inshallah. All right, so with that, uh, we've come to the end of our, of our uh, webinar. Um, we will try and get all these questions answered and we will share this video with you so that you can share it with your friends. Uh, make sure to go to ethiscrowd.com, indicate your interest. Right now, uh, we do have some campaigns that are running, uh, but they are, most of them are already fully pledged, although the transaction has not been completed. But within the next one, a uh, few days probably, uh, these campaigns will be fully funded. And we'll have more campaigns every week. We always try to, to onboard and to feature more campaigns uh, after we complete our screening process. So make sure you sign up, you register your interest. Uh, let us know how much you're willing to invest, how much you're interested to start with, how much you want to put in, so that it's easier for us also to plan the number of projects coming out. And uh, with that, thank you so much. Uh, hope to speak to you again. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.